I think one of the reasons I'm really privileged to have you here is because it's so obvious that you are working tirelessly to put an end to this, this, this abuse. Well, try. mm -hmm. yeah. Try. yeah, trying to put an end or play a part in trying to put an end to this horrific child abuse that is like a pandemic. I mean, it's, it's just huge, bigger, but it's only in the last 12 months mm -hmm. that it's my eyes and my heart has really opened to just how big this problem is. Uh, one of the wards I was took into care in 1977. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Friday, I went in, I ran, I ran, I got away for about two miles, but I got caught, got took back, got took into what, a uh, prison cell, and it was a prison cell. Uh, they called it the secure unit uh, for running away for wanting to go back to my mum. Uh, and then uh, within the time I was in there, I was abused. Uh, and because I was playing up at the, the, the family group home, they transferred us back to Emsworth, the place where I was abused in the first place. Then I was transferred from there into Hexham, which was Mount Royal, which was Mount Royal, which was a Bernard Rose run home. Because because I was playing up there, they sent us back to Emsworth, yeah? And then from Emsworth, I went to Witherwack. On a daily basis with Witherwack, if you didn't see the staff pinning people down, that would be rare. That would be like a visit from God. Seriously. Uh, and, the, and the techniques, I mean, I've seen one, one lad there, uh, Arthur, as Arthur was very much behind learning, he used to have Arthur in the class on his own. It's like them cards, like A, B, C, yeah? Arthur couldn't do them, yeah? So it's always bothered me this, you know? Arthur couldn't fight back. And Adrian Garbett loved it because he used to play psychological, tri psychological tricks on him. You know what I mean? And I wasn't having that. And we went and nothing was done about it, you know? You know, and plus the teacher knew Adrian from the previous place where Adrian had been. Yeah. You no, know, he never got justice. It was the psychological uh, the, the side of it that what I saw in your story when I read your story, turning the light on and off, and you were just what six, seven, or nine yeah, years old or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and that and it's it's the psychological thing with children. It just it's just beyond. It just doesn't. So that was the first, so like I say, that was the first, that was the first time I was in care and they start the, the lights on, so that in a way. Raking you down, like, isn't it? It's a yeah, way that, set me, that set me for the rest of my life in care. I couldn't think like a child. No. Or what was happening next, it was behind me back, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, that, and that's what really like hits my heart because I work with children and it's about raising their confidence. It's about ensuring that they play and have their innocence for as long as possible. So, but to hear all of this deliberate psychological um, attack on children yeah. and, and special it children like It was 100% psychological. From, I mean, from leaving care, you obviously, obviously were able to speak about what had happened to you because well, what, you were what able it was, to... What it was, when I left care, the first couple of weeks, I was having really bad, really bad nightmares. Where my mum was having to come in and wake us up. It was taking like 10 minutes to wake us up. It wasn't an epileptic thing, but it was like, because I wasn't used to having me freedom, if you know what I mean. Right, okay. You know, I wasn't used to it, you know. Oh, Brian, there's some... It was just like, whoa, I wasn't used to it. You know, and I was having nightmares and that, and it was, they were getting really bad. Uh, I'd, have, I'd have talked to my mum and I decided to do something about it, you know. But fortunately, it took five years because the police wouldn't accept what I was saying, even though there was an investigation into the home about child abuse, what I was exactly going to the police for. This is what I'm saying. In all the years I've campaigned against non uh, paedophiles and stuff like that, you know. I also went against, went after foster and adoption services. Main reason because a lot of the social workers would have been through the where with uh, a lot of the social workers what worked in the care homes that I'd been in moved on to foster and adoption. Also there's incidences with some of the counsellors in the past where two lads where two lads were left left to drown in the bath when it was recommended that they'd be taken off that they'd be taken off uh, off the off the so called parents. 
the person who, who was responsible is got suspended for six months yeah um got suspended for six months with full pay and then took back to the very job well because she was the in, uh, the inspector not social service inspector but she was the one overall in charge yeah and uh she got suspended for six months full pay uh, brought back into the same type of job with given promotion so what i'm basically saying to me it's all about it's the children now uh, it's the children first well the, i mean how must it be you've been campaigning for so long you've experienced this on all levels yourself as a child for your pretty much your whole childhood to be still here now with it it hasn't got any better. I mean, I think care homes have closed down or whatever, but it's, you, private, isn't it? it's just bricks and water, isn't it's it? It's so obvious that this area is of paedophilia and the satanic side, which I didn't know about until last year, um, is just being deliberately. Oh, well, the satanic side, I would say, obviously Wales was bad, but there you got Anglesey. Anglesey is really bad. But if you notice where the truth's coming from, you know, it's mainly like, it's like, obviously we had Hunt Dillagrand in Jersey. Yeah. Now we've got allegations coming out of the Barclay brothers on, on Guernsey. You know, the bangers? Yes. That's a, that's a new, that's the very latest. Yeah. Right. Okay. We had, we had the Shetland Islands. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then there was Kid Willie in Wales. The judge actually judged that as a, as a satanic trial. Uh, and obviously, I think out of all, out of like England, Wales and Scotland, I would say Scotland's the worst for satanic. Say in the 80s and 90s, in the 80s and 90s, you wouldn't pick up a paper in like child abuse or, or even local, when I say local, like uh, local man abuses child, you don't, you didn't get that. Then in the 90s, it started coming out more and more. Yeah, yeah the papers were starting to believe us, you know. Then 2000, <laughs> complete shut off. And if you noticed in 2000, a lot of the papers were getting bought out by the one companies. Mm -hmm. the one company, you know, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, but... but there's a real, I mean, there's a, just a real tight lid. I said on radio, I said on radio five years ago that it was coming to this point, what we're at now. I said that, I could say it, you know what I mean? I said that, and sure enough for that, I mean, I mean, we we'll say, well, the biggest pandemic is this so-called, uh, the so-called made-up vaccination, yeah. Mm -hmm. That that not only that not only at this time has been done because of what's coming out with child abuse, but it's also been used to cover up other things, as we all know. You know, but at the same time, there's more children getting abused now than ever in our know. Brian, I want to just touch on on you and. Obviously, you're doing all this, and you, you know, I, I, how, how are how are you like, you know, emotionally um, now? I don't, um, I don't show me emotions really. I mean, I've learned how to cut them off. Do you feel like there's still stuff from your childhood that you haven't, that you just yeah, keeping... yeah, I'll tell me story. Yeah, sounds like you you released from you released it to a point to then channel it into into this campaigning, uh, uh, and and well, to be honest, and you've not was, stopped. To be honest, since. the camp the campaigning's been all my life. It's part of it. It's like my right hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the reasons why I do this is because a couple of the la a, a couple of the lads a couple of the lads I knew killed themselves. In fact, it was more than a couple. You know, because of what they went through in Witherwack. Yeah. I want to give them children the very thing that I didn't have, their childhood. Yeah. You know, the most important thing, I want to give them their childhood. I want to give them the things that I didn't have. I don't mean like, I don't mean like uh, toys and stuff, you know what I mean? I mean, like their freedom as a child, uh, the, only thing I'm, the only thing I'll say is I'll continue to fight, no matter what, to my last dying breath. Because that's how evil, that's how evil it was when I was in care, and it still is now. So I kind of like go ahead and have a normal life, 
back home, but you know what I mean? I kind of like to have a life where I need no children getting abused because I'm continuing with my life and my life's more important. I couldn't do that. 